Hey, listeners, I'm Erica. And I'm Sean. We are co-owners of Code One Barbecue in Wilmington, Massachusetts, and we're here at WCTV on location recording through Fire and Oak, a podcast about what it's like to run a small business, manage a family, and get through life every day. I like that one. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Through Fire and Oak. We are at WCTV. Thank you for producing our show. We're in their new podcast room, so I'm really excited, and it's a little weird um, because I'm so used to being across the desk from Sean and staring at him and not the camera. Uh, Unfortunately, Sean's not here today. He is home with a sick child, and that's sort of par for the course. Uh, We're husband and wife team, small business owners. We get three children at home, and he had to stay home with one of our kids who were sick. We decided not to cancel, and I'm totally going to rock this by myself. Today we have our first guest, so we're really excited. This is Rob Witten and Jane Lowe, and they are joining us, and they own Ping. Am I saying that right? Ping? Oh, is yeah. it Ping Coffee or just Ping? Just Ping. Just Ping in Lowell, Mass. And Rob, I met Rob and Jane because they came to visit us in the restaurant. They are a veteran-owned and woman-owned small business, a startup. And I'm really excited to talk to them today. So welcome. Well, thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. (laughs) So is this your first podcast too, or have you been on other podcasts? It is. It's our first uh, podcast. Together. 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 You've been on podcasts before. Have I? For NPR. Oh, yeah, that's NPR. Oh, that's there a you, you forgot about that. Yeah, a long time ago. Well, uh, I, I had a food truck uh, before. And oh, you I did. did NPR thing, uh, but I, I guess uh, it wasn't as popular to call it a podcast. It was just a radio show. Yeah, because <laughs> they didn't call them really podcasts, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Now it's like that's the big thing. Everybody does podcasts, right? So tell me, what is Ping anyway? Yeah, Ping is an ultra convenient, wicked fast, uh, automated drive-through. And we sell primarily coffee, but we have a, a whole bunch of other kinds of um, drinks. We have like energy drinks, refreshers, things you would normally find at, um, you know, just your traditional coffee chain. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. So when did you when did you start? When did you actually officially open Ping? I think it was like two Six. months ago. Oh, uh, yeah. Two yeah. months? Yeah, I think yeah. eight weeks ago now. Yeah. We uh, got on site. We did the integration between the hardware, software, and firmware. Um, because if we didn't mention it, it's, uh, automated, it's automation, robotics, and uh, a little bit of AI mm-hmm. that's powering uh, the underlying technology. Um, so, yeah, so a few weeks of integration. Then we did some beta testing, a few weeks of friends and family beta testing to make sure we ironed out all the kinks. Um, and then we officially launched about six weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. So did you actually iron out all the kinks, or are you <laughs> currently still Most ironing Most of them. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, still, yeah. it's a little challenging because you have an app on your phone, and that's how you order. You download the app, and when you get close is when we start making your drink. Um, you know, So we have geofences, and uh, we have sensors on site to figure out who the next person is in, in the window. So that um, means everybody's phone has to be able to connect properly to our system and so to make sure it always works in every corner case was definitely a challenge, yeah. So you're definitely relying on technology and cell phone towers and all of that stuff to make sure it works properly. Mm-hmm. So where where did you come up with the idea for Ping? So this is an automated coffee system. I, I went online and I said, we, have, we haven't been by yet, even though you've been to our restaurant, but we will uh, be yeah, by. I'm sure you'll get by. <laughs> <laughs> you guys find you know, time, yeah. Yeah, when we, have, yeah. when we find time, because you know, when you're a small mm-hmm. business owner and you, know, you never have time for anything. So um, it's, it's, a, it's basically like a pod, almost like a shipping container, right? And then um, you know, someone orders coffee on the phone and they go there and get it. You only have one right now, right? Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. It's green and black and stuff like that. So, you know, how does that actually work? Like, what? who's in the pod? Yeah, the way that it works is we have an iOS mobile app. We're working on an Android one. Um, but you would just uh, open up the app and you can do a one-click order if you set, like, your usual drink, which most people typically get uh, their drink yep. out of habit. Um, then all you have to do is drive up and the window will open and then your uh, drink will be presented to you. Right. So it's totally scanless. It's completely seamless. Um, we already know who you are, so you don't have to tell us. Um, and then you can just drive off. So it's super easy, super fast. And what made you want to, what made you want to do coffee? I mean, you mentioned you had a food truck before, so I was going to yeah. ask about that oh, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. is this your first official business or have you done something before this? Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did the food truck before. I wanted to learn about the food 
uh, service industry and I've always uh, been a foodie and a techie, you know, so right. uh, just a nerd in both areas, right? So I, I've always thought that food automation is just this really unexplored thing mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, we could work on. Imagine, you know, just having things made just before you got there. So it's super fresh. I, I think there's a lot of fun things you could do that way. And uh, so I did the food truck and it was a great learning experience. It actually helped uh, in a lot of ways prepare us for this, you know, to understand how to do the permitting and what their, you know, regulatory requirements are and how to manage inventory, all that sort of thing. And uh, right. But this is, uh, you know, sort of, we, we started with coffee because we wanted to uh, have something that people would know how to do you know, or, or think to do. You know, you would think to order on your phone and pick up a coffee from a kiosk. Like that's kind of a known thing to do. Right. And, uh, uh, but eventually we want to be able to let you pick up many other things. You know, it could be food, it could be convenience items, that, that sort of thing. So it's more, you know, honing in on that experience. And then we can build off of that and add more things to it. I think it's also because drinks are easier to automate than food. Right. Food prep, like, automation is very, very difficult. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is we were trying to sp solve for very specific problems that we encountered personally at Starbucks and Dunkin's. Like, mm. what would those problems be? Yeah. Can't imagine there's any problems <laughs> yeah, at those know. places at all. Well, uh, <laughs> well, I have three daughters. I mean, they're 20, 18, and 16 now, and they right. love their little drinks, right? And, right. And they, the Starbucks they like the pink drink or something or, like or, that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, like and, trendy drinks. And, uh, and so we've sat in a lot of fast food lines, and I yep. didn't really like fast food that much, right? Yep. So, um, and, and it was just a long wait, and they'd usually get my order wrong for some reason. And, uh, yep, uh, nobody you know, else's, it's, though. It's getting more and more expensive, and you just sit there, and, like, the fumes from a truck would be, like, wandering. It, it is, it's just an overall bad experience. And we're like, gosh, you know, I think we could put something, you know, better than this together between her – uh, customer experience uh, background and uh, consumer experience background and uh, my automation background, we ought to be able to figure this out. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we, have a, um, we have a Starbucks near us, and the line sometimes can wrap, like, out into the street of oh, people yeah. just waiting for food. Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. Yeah. Um, and I get it because you want fast inconvenience, but you also want, like, made-from-scratch stuff. You mm. don't want, like, you know – something that's here it just opened a box and handed it to you so mm -hmm. how do you how how, do, how does your coffee compare to some of the major chains like how are you going to compete with them and what everybody loves like what's go, what's what's great about your coffee that's going to drive everybody to ping yeah well we uh, partnered with another startup in new england and they what they do is they um, make these this pre-brew it's super premium um, they are a subscription service direct to customer um, and when we're kind of like their wholesale partner. Um, but yeah, so that's okay. the where we've sourced it. But they're also like uh, roaster agnostic. So they'll have George Howell, they'll have Clatch. They have a lot of other like very premium roasters that they work with. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Do we, are you allowed to say who, who they are or do you have like an NDA that you can't like talk about it? I guess we can talk about it. It's, yeah, it's a cometeer. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of them. I haven't. I'm not. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty much like I make black coffee at home and I drink black coffee every morning. I don't mm. go out like my husband. And if he were here, he would be saying that he loves like the coffee. He loves to go get his coffee from places, but he's always frustrated with them messing up his order too. Mm -hmm. He loves iced coffee. So do you mm -hmm. do iced coffee? Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. Like even dead of winter shoveling you know seven feet of snow he's drinking an iced coffee yeah like, that's hilarious with this yeah. celtics hat on and his overalls yeah so yeah that's not unusual actually there's a stat behind that where 75 percent of orders that go through coffee chains is they're cold they're cold yeah, yeah. yeah. No. like you, that's i wonder why yeah uh, <laughs> i don't know i like hot drinks i'm um, yeah. yeah i'm uh, such like a, give me a hot a yeah. hot coffee every morning even if it's like 90 degrees outside like right. i want my nice warm hot coffee yeah mm -hmm. you know yeah so what's it like so I, I, you didn't mention, but um, we had talked prior to this, and I know that you guys are kind of sitting in the pod right now. So the whole mm -hmm. idea of automation is sort of taking away the people, right, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking through your website, and you have like an FAQ on your site. Mm -hmm. And one of your questions that you put out there is, um, are you eliminating the barista job by doing this? So, and you said, oh, no, not at all. Like, we're complementing right. it. So, really, how does that work? Like, 
do you find that people prefer to not talk to anybody at all and they just want to grab and go? Or do you get a lot of like people pushing that big button that you have to say, hey, I need help? Yeah, so we actually did a lot of research around who likes to go through drive throughs And it's absolutely like you kind of mentioned. It's people who are introverts like myself who don't right. necessarily like show up and I don't really want to say hi because like I'm you know introverted. Um, yeah, it's like you know parents with small kids, pets, people with disabilities, people who just don't want to get out of their car. Maybe they're wearing their PJs. Um, but yeah. also we know that like commuters, they think of the drive throughs traditionally um, much faster. And so like there's a lot of morning commuters that go through as well. And that's really proved out for us is like, mm -hmm. that's a lot of our uh, customers. What I will say is that um, we are an additive to a Starbucks, like sit down place, for instance. Like there will always be a place for baristas. People really love that in-store experience. Yep. We're just providing them with an alternative, right? Because right now, 30% of people will see that line and leave. Yeah. We're capturing that audience, like who just didn't have time to mm -hmm. go in or didn't want to interact with the barista. So there's, it's, and you know, the other thing is about it is yes, automation makes things more efficient, but actually they've done studies to show that when you bring automation in the other jobs that are created around it, like as an ecosystem, they're, right. they're actually like, you know, higher skilled, like we're still going to need people on site. We're going to need customer service, um, you know, yeah, we need to, you know, people to maintain it. And it'll yeah. be higher skill, higher paying jobs. That uh, it, It's funny because we're in there now and we're kind of doing the almost the Willy Wonka thing. And, uh, yeah. and we're really um, focusing on delivering on that promise to make sure you don't have to wait and you have a high quality thing. Well, it's a little stressful when you have a bunch of orders in there and you're yeah. trying to make sure everything's going properly. And, uh, you know, so... Uh, it's, it's nice to be able to take that kind of uh, stressful thing and, and, and use automation for that and allow people to do what they're good at, like customer service, talking to each other, right. and, you know, showing them how it works and, and that sort of thing. I, I think it's, uh, it, it, in a way, just allows people to kind of magnify themselves a little bit when, when they want to have a small business like this. Because uh, one of the nice things about our system is it, it's not going to be super expensive to own one later. And we're very much <clears throat> looking forward to a franchise I model. I was going to say, where, so you're thinking you know, franchising. You yeah. know, for under 200K, we could set up a site like this. And now you don't right. have to be rich to begin with to necessarily, uh, right. you know, have one of these. And, and those are the kind of people we want that are like us, that are, you know, just super motivated, not rich yeah. to begin with. But, Go-getters that are uh, like, you know, you just put yeah. the hard work in. And yeah, they're going to be there to help their new customers through and help tell the story right. and keep the site clean. Just all these little things that uh, actually make a huge difference, I think, for the overall experience. Right. Cause you, so you mentioned that there was like an AI component to it. And mm. I think AI has sort of a bad rep right now. And yeah. um, uh, as it <laughs> <laughs> Maria giggled. <laughs> yeah. um, so as an author myself, so I, on the, on the side or, you know, throughout my whole life, I've been an author, a published author, and that's like a huge thing in the AI world with, you know, writers and artists and stuff like that and people are like oh you know they're getting rid of jobs and so on and so forth and then you kind of look over to the other side of it and ai is creating this whole new world that like is open to to other people and to new jobs and like you said higher skills so how do you how does the ai benefit you and what's you know what's the choice in going with that versus like just you know having a human do all the work yeah ai is um you know, it's, it's, it's again, kind of, you got to use things w for what they're good at, right? right. Um, like, for example, we, we use AI to figure out your window height because we don't want uh, uh, you to have to reach up or down and we have an adjustable oh, window. Idea. So, it, <laughs> you know, we have a vision <laughs> yeah. system that right. figures out, you know, it just looks at your car really quick with a stereo camera and figures out how high your window is. So and your your coffee platform goes up and down based <laughs> yep. on the height. Like the so when you're in the tiny window. little car, because yeah, right? exactly. I'm sure it's, I'm a short person, so that would benefit yeah. me. <laughs> so if you're in a tall truck or a yeah. you know short car, that that will be presented at the right height. So so that's a great use of it. And right. then, uh, but you know that that's a technical use. And, and mm -hmm. but there are other things that are more creative. Like um, if you put in your name in a couple of prompts, we can create a custom label just for you. Right. Right. And it's kind of cool to see how uh, that can evolve. But it's also um, I, I mean I wouldn't want to use it for anything life threatening because. Uh, <laughs> 
it, yeah. it makes a lot of mistakes. It misspells coffee. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah or or it'll misspell your name. Or yeah. So like it's that. just like Starbucks then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I, I think it's a cool way that people can see how AI will evolve over time. You know, right. You can see your label getting better and better. And as we train, like we're using, you know, just ChatGPT Dolly. And right. as I continue to enter, uh, you know, label descriptions and things that I want into it, it gets better and better. So I have to correct it less and less. So you're actually training that model as well. So right. it's fun to see that evolution over time. Yeah, I think our design philosophy is that the automation, all the technology should serve the customer. Like it right. should mm. go towards the customer experience because that's what we're 100% focused on yeah. is the best customer experience possible. So that's our design philosophy for AI too. Like we use it in places where it's not crucial um, and also it enhances the customer experience. The labels, for example, like we don't go out and use AI to like find out information about you. It's purely what you tell us about yourself, like right. what you're willing to share. Um, and then we create that label. And it's a very fun and it's like a not scary way of using AI. Right. Nice. I like that. I wish I could use a little AI in our restaurant because, like you said, you, when you start getting orders in and you're kind of behind the scenes and you're pushing all of the buttons, but then you want that customer experience. So a lot of people come into – and that actually happened with you guys. You come into Code 1 and then somebody, like, might ask for me or, you mm. know, because – we've met before or you just want to you know say hi or whatever reason and then i'm like i'm cutting me and i'm yeah. over here doing this <laughs> yeah. and then my you know pos system goes down and i can't really have that because that's what i like i mean that's one of the reasons why we do the podcast now is because i love talking to people and meeting people and just you know interacting and i could just stand there all day doing that but then i have to go work yeah mm. you know it can get pretty stressful doing yeah. that kind of thing well, we've seen AI being used now in software for like inventory management for restaurants. It's right. starting to make its way into like that's that would be oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I just imagine someday I have a little like robot running around being like, "You're all out of baked beans. Yeah. You need more baked beans." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not that far away. Really. That's the Steven Steven Spielberg yeah. movie, right? AI. Yeah. You know, yeah. We came up with that. Like, how long has that been? Twenty years since that movie came out, or something. So that's yeah. kind of relevant now, right? Mm. I actually heard somebody on the radio. I was listening to W R O R. And um, I'm not sure which which program it was, but they were talking about how somebody um, got a new dog and it's an AI dog. So now they have like an AI dog that you can get. So like you can love it and it can love you back. But you don't have to feed it or take it out to go to the bathroom. So wow. Like, mm. <laughs> I don't know. That's a little <laughs> yeah. that's a little Dang. bit much, right? <laughs> I wonder how it loves you back, though. I don't know. Yeah, I, see, that's where my, you see, you guys are in the technology thing. You probably would understand that more than I do, but it's something to do with the learning process. Like, how do you mm. know, right? How do you know it's real? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, right. It's, uh, well, it's interesting. Like, any model can be trained, you know. Right. You kind of neural net model like that. And, uh, it, you know, it often mimics, like, what you do, and it'll remember things that you ask for. That's mm -hmm. how you, you train it. Uh, same with, like, you know, pushing the cars through in front of the cameras. Like, you... You tell it, okay, here's the window on this car. It's like, okay, so if it sees a similar window, then. Right. And so the same thing with uh, training a model to understand different situations. Like, oh, I Facial see expressions this and, uh, yeah. situation with this face, you know, and, and so this is the expected response. It's like deductive reasoning. Yeah. 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 When you say that, we actually met an AI technologist who um, is working on uh, software which can tell what you're feeling through your voice. Mm. Wow. Yeah. 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 I think it's already being used for customer service. Like, yeah. there right. is software that, like, help tells the customer service rep, like, oh, this person's getting, like, angry or, you know. Like, right, oh, right, right. Say this instead. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, like, already in use. To give them, like, better responses, yeah. like, to, mm. you know, to be able to mitigate the situation. and Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and that's kind of the kind of stuff we think we could use someday, too, as well. Like, uh, you know, if, if we have, uh, let's say, vitamin C and you're not, you're feeling a little under the weather when you <laughs> order your drink, you're like, oh, would you like me to add vitamin C to your drink so that, you know, you're, um, you know, prepared for the day or whatever. To Like putting in a whole or, health aspect to yeah, it. Or, yeah. 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 I think there's a lot of fun potential there for like drink innovation, for, uh, you know, making sure you're getting the right things you need. And then also just customer service. You know, if you need right. a quick, immediate response, let's say you accidentally dump a drink or something like that. To have an AI assistant say, "All right, great. Here's your new drink. It's all ready. Don't worry about that." And you know, we know 
one. So no do they have to pay for the new drink? Of or course you guys... not. No, no. It's, it's, <laughs> it's much like when better. a child drops their ice cream after they've left the store. <laughs> it's much better to like uh, just focus on the customer experience and make sure they leave happy. That's way more True. important than the yep. dollar or two of yeah. you know, cost. They, you know what's surprising to us, too, is that we haven't had one customer drop their drink. Yeah. Not yeah. Good. Now, oh, but yeah. knock on wood now because I know. Yeah, I know, right. Yeah. <laughs> Angst us forever. But I, I think what it shows is our system is working, right? If right. You're, if you're presenting the drinks in a nice way, um, yeah, uh, that's convenient for people, then they're not going to drop it. And so, yeah. Right. I think it's a little bit of validation there, which is cool. Yeah. So, where did you get the name from? Like, that's a that's a big one. Where did Ping. Why oh, ping? What is ping? Where did that name come from? <laughs> we uh, well, we started with zips. Uh, yeah. Z i p p s, and it okay. was a little too polarizing. Either people loved the name or didn't. And then, uh, you know, did you do market research on that? <clears throat> like, did you like you know go out and do like a Facebook poll to say, hey, what do you think about this name, mm. or just? Yeah, we did do a lot of polls. Yeah. But when it comes to naming things, people just do not agree. Right. Mm. Like if you had four options, like it'd be 25% across like all four. Yeah. Right. Like there's no, no it yeah. Funny. So it's like, okay, we just have to pick something at right. this point yeah. so we can move forward. Um, some people got it, but most people were mispronouncing it. They were like, Sizips? Sizips. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 But well, and, and plus we didn't necessarily always want to be a drink uh, yeah. station, right? I mean, we want to have the drinks, but we want to add a lot more to it. Right. So we wanted something that was a little more. Uh, universal and uh, and so anyways one of our advisors Josh Levine and I were texting one night and uh, he was going down the path of uh, oh gosh what if it was like a uh, a lighthouse or a beacon or something I was like geez this isn't a financial institution <laughs> oh, no, it's all terrible and of one of the many he was just shooting out a bunch of, bunch of names and uh, and one of them was a ping and, uh, and and it kind of caught my eye because I went to West Point and mm -hmm. uh, what plebes have to do or used to have to do back in the old core, uh, you ha used to have to ping around. You had to walk really fast uh, right. between classes. Um, and uh, and so now uh, the, the idea in my head was like, oh, you don't drive through, you ping through, you go through really fast. But it also works on other levels. Like you ping us with your order and then we ping you when you get close. And so ping, 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 you know. It's, right. It's fun to say ping. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nice. short, kind of like our lines. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a good exactly. one. I like yeah. that. Yes. I just thought of it. Uh, yeah. Let's write that down somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Uh, we're recording. Uh, excellent. excellent. Good. Yeah. We'll save that one for later. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys um, are partners in this business, but you're also partners in real life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, one of the biggest questions that Sean and I, my empty seat across the way, mm. One of the biggest questions we get all the time is, what is it What is it like working with? Well, a lot of times they'll say to him, what is it like working with your wife? And I'm like, hmm, what is it like working with your husband? You know, mm, so yeah. what is it like working and living together? I think that's a big thing because some people think, oh, if you're married or you're together, you're a couple, you know, you, you know, you have to separate life and work, but you don't, you can't. So how do you guys manage that? Yeah. You absolutely cannot because yeah. we are together 24-7. All the time. So for anyone listening who's thinking about it, just realize <laughs> seeing this person. Yeah. like Every day, all day every long. Day, every yeah. day, yeah. <laughs> you never like them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't been easy at all. Like, right. we actually worked together at Shark Ninja way back mm. and, like, on the same team launching, developing products. Okay. You know, Is that how you met? That's actually how we yeah. met. Okay. Um, so we knew we got along, and we also knew that we had worked together. Mm -hmm. But still, even when we started this, one of the things we had to learn, was, relearn, was communication in a work setting. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, no. we, he's like, I don't like how you're communicating to me. And then I'd have to adjust. Very loud. <laughs> <laughs> because you're Very like, loud. we're not in our own private house, yeah. <laughs> in our own bedroom. There's customers out yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, I, I think we really found a good. Uh, this is a good rhythm now that we've kind spot. of sort of like, yeah. it's taken a little bit to adjust. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And even then, we still have our arguments. Um, you know, and I had listened to a lot of podcasts about entrepreneurs and founders. And right. I was listening to one. I think it was Melissa and Doug. You know, the um, yep. yeah, the toy company. And they were saying the way they resolve um, conflict is that they go with the decision of whoever felt the strongest about it. Mm. Oh. Yeah. yeah. However, I think we try that. And I'm not sure that. I mean, I think it works for them. But I'm not sure it totally works for us. But, you know, it's just like we always try to mm. think of, like, ways in which this, you know, uh, will work out better 
right. make better decisions when we are complete on completely like different sides right. of whatever topic we're talking about. Yeah. I feel like that brings a lot of a, a level of emotion into it because you can feel strongly about something because you have so much emotion attached yes. to it. It doesn't make mm. it the right decision. Right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. We've had, had some good good arguments. So. Yeah. But I mean, you know, we we also respect each other. So. Right. Like at the end of the day, we're we're going to you know figure it out. Yeah, and that's, that's that. really what yeah. it is, like mutual mutual yeah. consideration, respect for each other, like, yeah. you it's know, boundaries yeah. are really important, especially mm. like yes. in the workplace, like knowing like, okay, it, you, you know, you're probably could be fighting about something like our stove died at home. So now we're arguing about what's the better stove to get or if mm. we should even buy another one or this and that. You don't bring that into the workplace, mm. you know? Yeah. I don't think we're it's, good at that. No, <laughs> no, no, we should do that. We've I had mean, we've had a couple more years' experience, I think, doing working together. Uh, <laughs> we're yeah. Sean and I have been together twenty years, so we're almost twenty years wow. anniversary. So, wow. and we have three children. And if you listen to some of our former podcasts, like we actually one of our episodes, we go really deep into how um, how our, it affected our mental health on like a very negative mm. level. And um, Sean ended up, he, he always he always wants to kill me when I, he's an introvert too. So he hates talking about things and I'm always putting him on the spot and being mm. like, let's talk about this. So he ended up having a call, you know, the Veterans Crisis Helpline to, you know, kind of stabilize that and figure things out and work through things. And um, we're completely different people, he and I. So I say he's very impulsive. He likes to just jump to and make decisions where I have to be analytical and I have to step back and think about it and then we have to figure out how to come together with that so it's a huge learning process and learning how to um, communicate not just communicate but understand each other like comprehension I think is like the mm. biggest thing yeah, yeah. so wow. and it doesn't mean that you uh, don't fight right yeah. because well, we do I, I think it's just like uh, getting past that yeah and, and it's like okay well and that's what Let's that's what it says. Like, and, can you get yeah. past that? If you can't yeah. get past it, then there's something yeah. deeper going on, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that because you know he went and he got he sought like help. Like he mm. like that's wonderful. Yes, yeah. like totally an option. Right. Yeah. I mean, the weird thing is, um, so we're in the middle of fundraising for our next okay. iteration. Um, nice. But we were told, you know, investors don't like couples. They don't like couples. Yeah. Because like, what happens if you disagree and you break up the company? Like what happens to it but right. well, I think that if anything we're so committed to each other as a couple that we have to make the business thing work right like, we're not mm. gonna break up because this business you know so like right. I actually think it makes us stronger so I don't really yep. agree with that and plus we're, we work on this all the time. like all we're time. always thinking about our right. business like yep. almost every conversation is about that same, yeah. right? same so, for us yeah I mean it's just uh, that level of focus I just don't think you could have with somebody that you're right yeah, uh, you can't that you're coupled not, with. You're right. not always together, right? right. So, um, yeah. Yeah, trying to be a partner with somebody that you don't know very well because that like can always lead to like. Because I hear a lot of nightmare stories where like, oh, I you know partnered with somebody on this and they stole all my intellectual property and yeah. so on. Yeah, so a so lot of founders and, break up, you know, because yep. they're not as committed to each other. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, and the thing, the other thing I noticed too is like you're, you know, you can make mistakes and you feel safe. Mm. with that person that you're making the mistake with so it's mm -hmm. not like it's an end of the world like you know you're yeah. not you know worried about what that other person's going to think of you because you know at the end of the day you're going to go home and you're going to have a hug and a kiss and everything's going to be good well you hope mm. yeah I yeah mean, you know yeah. not everybody makes it i think but right you know right. the mentality should be we're going to work through this right yeah. yeah and we will and we do yeah we do nice yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. But I'm just going to be real. Like, for instance, um, sometimes when we disagree, I'll put my, like, thoughts out there. Yep. <laughs> we, we'll disagree until someone else is like, hey, maybe you should do this other thing, which is what I said. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. So if someone else says it, yeah. like, we should do it. More not if I say it. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. More data. Yeah, you're less yeah. likely to listen to the person you're closest to, right? Yeah. Than, like, than, you know. The strangers out there who give you that. I go through the same exact. See, he would be bantering back and forth with me on this, too, because it's the same thing. It's like, oh, I, I was right anyway, huh? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Although sometimes I'm 100% certain she has uh, 
said back to me the idea I told her. <laughs> yes, that that's too, actually. That's, like, that's her own. And I was like, yes, yep. you're right. We should do that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Sean yes. does that to me yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. I come up with something and then like anything like, oh, and then he's like, oh, you know what we should do? We should do this thing. And I'm like, did brilliant. anybody... Uh, Anybody else see this? <laughs> it goes both ways. But at the end of the day, what's yeah. important is that we absorbed what you said. Yes. <laughs> yes. Listened. And then, yes. and then we write it down and then we move on from there, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what is your morning routine like? Like how do you start your day? Like and what are your hours with work and stuff? And when do you shut down? Do you shut down? And yeah. You know, just saying how you constantly are going through everything and doing everything and um, you know, the business is always at the forefront, but how do you wake up? When do you shut down? What's that like for you? Yeah, so we work hours that, um, because it's, we are trying to raise money off of the performance of our pod. So we do have to um, make sure that we have hours that, uh, you know, our customers want. So we do open during the week for the commuter as well as sort of an afternoon crowd as lunch, lunch crowd, things right. like that. But we do take off Mondays and Tuesdays because we are fundraising. And that's when generally when investors are in the office, you know, we're not emailing, mm. emailing them on the weekends. You know, you want to be able to, like, be right. fine for them. So, yeah, so we're trying to balance that. You know, I know, I, I know customers find it a little weird that we are not open 24-7. Um, but it's also because we need to be on site to do, like, maintenance, mm -hmm. to clean. Sanitation is really important to customers. Mm -hmm. yep. um, to do that customer service, we have to balance, like, that. And then also like our everyday, which is fundraising. Mm -hmm. Working on the business versus working in the business. And yeah. we, we get yeah. black too for not being open every single day. But I think that's the difference between a small business and like a big corporate business. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're just two people, even yeah. if you have, you guys don't have employees yet, right? It's just no, you it's two. Just us, no, yeah. no, so we've even contracted stuff, but yeah, we haven't hired them. Yet. Even having employees, like it's still we we still have to do everything. Like my husband's cooking every day, all day long. You need a day off, like yeah. you know. Yeah. You just we're not. Even though you utilize AI, right? We're not robots. We're humans. Exactly. So we need that time to rest. Yeah. So I I find that um, if I don't shut down at night, for me. I stop like with all the social media. I stop with all of the emails and everything. Like once, once I'm home for dinner with the kids, um, and sometimes I work late in the restaurant, so that end time will be a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't go back on until the next morning. Even it, and for Sean, he'll just twenty four seven like whatever. If he anytime anybody calls or an yeah. email comes through, he'll answer it right away. And you know, it's sort of how we're opposite of each other. But that's just. I have to shut down at the end of the day because I need that break. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I feel like yeah. I can't operate efficiently. Yeah. yeah, I need like an hour, like an hour before bed to like really wind down. I think. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if we don't fundraise, then we won't get to that twenty four seven operation. Right. You know, right. we have customers who want to be there at five thirty in the morning. Like we're trying to deliver on that. Like one right. day we will achieve that, so that you know. Yeah, we open at seven. So, but I mean, that means we're up at you know. 5:30, and then yep. you know restocking things, and uh, to get our system set up, we have to have a generator set up and set out our beacons and all this sort of thing. So yeah. it's a bit of a process to to get it going right. in the morning. So yeah. yeah, but we do start our days with coffee. Yes, we, do. <laughs> yeah. we wake up. Yeah. we're both like big coffee slash espresso drinkers. Yeah. Do you make it at home? Yes, you have you have like a fancy machine. Um, we have like a Breville for the espresso. Breville, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, it's actually it's interesting you bring that up because for some investors, they're like, really, is there a problem in the drive-thru? And the, pro the thing is they don't really go through drive throughs Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, typically when you're wealthier, you have like someone bring you, like an admin bring you coffee from Dunkin's. Or right. you might have that fran fancy like espresso machine at home. So you're not really experiencing the like common man or like everyday struggle right. of the drive through Yeah, or a lot of people live in the city, like investors live in like, yeah. New York or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so, so you're, they they're just walking into a coffee shop. Right. Yep. Not, there's no driving. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, that, so they don't have the same kind of experience. But it, right. it's so funny when you look at a drive through for the most part, like the same tech has basically been there for the last 50, 60 years, right? Right. Um, it hasn't changed. Yeah. I mean, the menu board's got a little different and maybe the speaker got a little bit better, but right. I mean, it really hasn't fundamentally changed. And so we're trying to like just kind of reimagine the whole thing and, and make it. 
Right. This is something I'd, I'd actually want to experience. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's one fact that's interesting. about those speakers. Yeah. On the one hand, everyone inside, well, the person taking your order can hear everything that you're saying. Yeah. Did I've heard that. I don't know if everyone knows that. Yeah. yeah. But on the other hand, if you're like playing really loud music or like whatever, sometimes they can't hear your order. And that actually leads to a lot of like order inaccuracies right. too. So mm -hmm. I just think it's really, that's yeah. like a funny. So there's like yeah. moments when I'm like, all right, enough. Stop it. I need to order right <laughs> yeah. now. The kids yeah. are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the person's like waiting and then they're like, hi, can I take your order? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just yeah. screamed at my kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, hi, uh, I'll have chicken nuggets, please. Or <laughs> <laughs> 50 chicken nuggets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On the fly right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did we, so how did you become aware of Code One Barbecue? When you had come in to see me, you had said, oh, I, I'd catered an event somewhere. Bunker Labs. Bunker Labs. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I went through a Bunker Labs, uh, uh, kind of an accelerator, right? It, um, you know, and uh, you, you guys catered our, one of the final events there. Right. And, so like your graduation. Right. And, you know, we we're supposed to present. And it was rough for me because I was like, I really want to eat a lot of this barbecue. <laughs> I was trying to like balance how much I could eat without looking really piggy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, at some point I really need to... Uh, go back there. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm telling everybody, eat, eat, yeah. eat. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I shouldn't go back for thirds. No, 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 no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so did you use good. Ping for that accelerator? Was it was that part of it or was it something else? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, well, it was called Zips back then. Zips, and, right. So we went through that. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was cool. You know, it was cool to see other, you know, veterans trying to, to make a go of it. I think, uh, you know, later we, we did... Uh, another pitch competition Jane, with Jane School. Jane went to Booth uh, at the okay. University of Chicago. And that that really took our, our pitch You did a pitch competition? Next, uh, level, yeah. 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 yeah, I cannot say enough good things about it. They mm. had, like, um, each cohort, our region, had our own group of advisors, and they were wonderful. Like, they took oh, yeah. us to another level. We were Because, like, before when we were pitching, I don't think we realized how bad our pitch deck was. Oh, it was terrible. I know. It was yeah, looking back. Yeah. 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 No, everyone was too kind or didn't want to tell us. <laughs> right. And so, um, yeah, but they really helped us, like, with crafting the story, with making our So who good. helped you? Was it your cohort or your... Well, or both? I, I'd say the booth, uh, the booth yeah. one was definitely... The big uh, pitch. I mean, Hernando, as a... As an advisor, was just he, he was really really, good. and he actually ended up being our first angel investor as, as well. Oh, that's uh, awesome! Later, so that was super cool. Yeah. yeah. What is what is what is an angel investor? So like, is, is do you have to do you pay them back, or is that something that they gift to you? Um, well, they take equity in your company. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for yeah. their contribution or investment, yeah, they'll take it. And then they only earn something if you make a profit, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. So you have to have a liquidity yeah. event of some sort, whether you sell the business or uh, you buy back shares, you could do that later. Right. Or you could uh, IPO. You know, the, the, mm -hmm. these are all ways that they would uh, get it back. But uh, but yeah, they're, they're saying, okay, I'm willing to wait. Forever. Five years yeah. <laughs> for that to happen, yeah. and uh, you know they they are hoping for a larger. You know they believe in your company and right, and, and are expecting a pretty large return at some point. And, That's uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so that helped you build your app, your first iOS app, and get your first location. And well, actually, we were all today we're self funded. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, we yeah. just got. Uh, we just only recently got some investments. Okay. Um, but yeah, we spent a, a lot of our own money building everything. The app. Yeah. The trip, so did the you project. stay working at a at a job while you did this, or did you just like jump right in? Well, all the way feet first. He jumped right in last yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like trying to build a store of money, and so I worked until like September of last year. But it was way too hard to work a day job and then also try to focus at night on mm. you right. Know, yeah. yeah, so it's it just difficult. we just yeah. like quit and went all in. Yeah, yeah. At some point, you have to make that decision, <clears throat> right? We kind of went through the same thing. Um, I I was already out of like my regular, um, what they call the steady paycheck, the nine to five for a while because I was just doing a small self employed business when we started Code One. But Sean was working full time and he was managing for an HVAC company, and so it was just constant mm. meetings, always on the phone, dealing with customers, and then trying to cook all night, you know, mm. as a pit master. And, we, you know, there was a point where I was like, we either have to take this to the next level and you have to quit. You have to trust that something's going to happen or we don't. Like, which way do you want to go? And mm. how do you make that decision? Right? Yeah. yeah. It's a scary leap. But I think that both of us 
wish we'd have been entrepreneurs earlier. Like you had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, and the food truck was like an interesting start, but like right. I, I wish I had done more earlier. Um, but you, you just yeah. learn so quickly once you yeah. jump into it, right? Uh, it's very different doing a startup versus working for any company, anybody else's company. Like right. doing your own thing is just so different. And we learn so fast, like, well, actually, not not at first. Like the first six months, we tried doing the pitch deck in a dream and just going out to raise money. And eventually, we realized that that wasn't going to work. And I think it was Jane that said, "Like, we need to build something. We got to stop trying to get other people to invest in our idea, and we need to build a company, right? right. And, and and then people can invest in that. And and I think that was like a really good mindset change for us to say, "All right, we're going to go build something." some sort of, you know, MVP or pilot that, that, you know, we can point to and say, all right, this is what we need. Because yeah. Just teach, you know, just kind of pitching the idea to people is, is not as, um, as strong a, a position and not as um, convincing. So right. Say, yeah, because you don't, if you don't have like something solid for somebody <coughs> to touch, something right. tangible, they can, they don't right. always like follow into it, yeah. you know. Yeah. But we also like would never go back to a nine to five. If no, like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, don't I can't. We both cannot imagine that for ourselves. That's anymore. what we say all the time. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. we have we definitely have our moments where we're like, this is really hard. Like, we're really struggling, or you know, we're we're it, everything when you work for yourself is you, you have to generate income, you have to generate mm -hmm. money, we have to pay payroll, mm -hmm. you know, and every day it's like, I'm exhausted. Okay, what am I going to do to generate money today? How am I going to keep it coming in? Or we're worried about. Um, and I, I hate to use the word worry because I know like when you worry, it takes away from everything around you, right? You don't, you shouldn't worry. You just want to focus on like the now and what you're doing now, but we need to make sure that people are coming into the store and people are finding us and this and that. And it's just a constant struggle. And there are moments when you're like, what are we doing? Like mm -hmm. what is happening right now? Um, and over the past, so we've been in business a little over three years now. So we have learned the art of the pivot, and that's mm -hmm. something that we're definitely like, if this isn't working, you know, why are we still pushing it? Let's pivot this way. And Sean, you know, says that all the time. And for me, there's no going back. Like I've been out of the rat race, you would call it, working for other people for almost a decade now. Like I just, oh, yeah. I couldn't. Like mm -hmm. To go back to office politics? Yeah. Like, you know, it's just, oh gosh, yeah. I mean, there's no job that's perfect. Like everyone's no. stressed, right? Like. But mm -hmm. we also understand some of our friends have kids and they like need to have a very steady job and mm -hmm. we get it. And, but like when we talk with them, like you could tell that not everyone's happy in their roles. Like they could be a VP, they could be, you know, anything, like any role in any company. There's, it's never like perfect. So right. yeah. it's just what makes sense for you. And for us, it's, you know, working for ourselves, making the decisions we feel are, are right, making changes, like you said, like the pivots really quickly without having to run it up a ladder. Mm. right yeah yeah so i think uh, that for us is much more important and you, you're in yeah. charge of like your own schedule and like there's a there it, it's, it doesn't sound like it because when you're working for yourself like we've already said you you were saying it's 24 7 you're constantly but you are in charge of your own schedule and you can make your own oh, yeah. life and you can show up to things whereas like when you're working for somebody else it's like oh can i request this day off to be at my you know mm. kids school play or whatever it may be and they're like no you can't because we need you and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Or like when now every every company is calling their employees back to the office. Like that's a huge change. People had made drastic changes through their lives to accommodate work from home. And now like, you know. Yeah, they want you home. to come back in regularly. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they bought a house that's like an hour and a half away. Yeah. You know, and like, now they have yeah. yeah. health care like, again. Uh, like, like, oh so oh it's gosh, like, yeah. yeah. So to your point about making your own schedules, that's really important. Yeah. yeah, but I will say that I feel guilty. I don't know how you guys feel guilty if I'm not working every mm, minute of the yeah. day on yep. my business. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we enjoy. It. You know, it's, it's, so it's it's different. Like, I don't think I enjoyed any job as much as working yeah. on our own thing. Like, I, I like coming up with ideas and trying right. to you know figure out how to make it work. Especially since we're in a category that's just very different. Like, we're not a straight B2B SaaS or a FinTech play or something like that. We're right. kind of our own new category and that, that comes with its own challenges, but it's fun. It's like we're creating a category, right? So right. I, I think, uh, you know, consumer facing automation is a, just a very exciting thing that has so much potential that just 
hasn't yeah. been realized that, that could use current technology and make our lives our daily lives like so much better you know? you're here to like disrupt the scene and yeah like, absolutely create something for people yeah but what fuels us it, it, our customers we have oh the gosh, best yeah. customers i'm sure yeah. you also think you have the best customers. yeah we do too. we, we have, have the best, best customers, customers. yeah, yeah. There's... All right, like competition who yeah. has the best customers yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. yeah like they're just so supportive so yeah. they'll give us feedback. Yeah. The and that's who we do it for every day. I think that yeah. if we hadn't seen their reactions to what we're building, if they weren't so mm. positive, you know, we might rethink what we're doing. But like every day we go in and we're like, let's focus 100% on this because our customers are telling us it's right. Yeah. Right. It's something they're looking or for. You can hear their reactions sometimes. And it's just so funny. Or like they're excited that their coffee just their showed up in the yeah, window. Their first and time stuff. is always really fun. Yeah. And, you know, like, uh, what was that one lady? She's like, Shut up. <laughs> you know, yeah. She couldn't believe that her drink was just there. Do you record ready. that? Because that should totally oh, yeah. be a little video that you make <laughs> right. to like promote yeah. the, the product. Do, uh, like, oh, I don't, I don't how exciting know everybody is. Like yeah. <laughs> well, you could, you know, have yeah. them sign like when they when they oh, we should, uh, when they order on the app. Would it, would you be okay with being recorded oh, as you pick yeah. up your coffee uh, yeah. for like social media? A lot of people will say yes. Oh yeah. That's you know, right. you'll definitely yeah. have your people who will say no, but we do that in the store a lot when people come in i'm like all right you know i'm gonna post on social media is anybody opposed to being out there and they're like mm. no and then everybody like fakes like they're eating or doing something fun oh, that's or great. Whatever, you know? that's great. Yeah. Yeah. one time we were sometime like sean doesn't always get to be in the restaurant so there was mm. the times when he is everybody's like you know crowding him they want to talk to him they want to ask him all the questions and there was one moment where I was like, this would be a great photo op. And I went and I ran and grabbed my camera and then I came out and he was kind of like done talking. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Do we, that again. Did we do that? Yeah. Can we yeah. can we do a fake out now? Like mm -hmm. pretend that he's talking to everybody. And he went out there and he put his hands up like this and everybody was like, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we got the photo and posted it, you know. Oh, yeah. But you know, it, it's good social media and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's definitely one of the nice things about our setup is uh it's very shareable content, you know, right. like the whole presentation and like it was an automated experience, right? So Yeah. I mean, very few people actually get to interact with automation on a daily basis. I mean, when was the last time you interacted with any robot that wasn't a Roomba, right? Right. And so yeah. I, I think people are uh, anxious to try it and, yep. um, you know, to see what more, you know, what else we can do with it, right? Right. I, I think they're excited about it. Yeah, because I think we set out to solve a bunch of problems, like a whole mm. list of problems. But actually, at the end of the day, what we created was this like magical experience. Some people think it's magical, right? Yeah. Um, where yes. yeah, like it like serves them. Like the idea was to make it as easy for them. Like mm -hmm. that's the whole point of like creating a product too. Is you know you're not creating a product for you. You're creating something for the customer, and it's you know, a lot of people will say, well, what does your customer need? Fine. And it's not what the customer needs. It's what the customer wants. Mm -hmm. And what does your customer want? They want, you know, fast lines. They want coffee that's made right. They want mm -hmm. in and out. You know, sometimes they want to talk to people. A lot of times they don't. Mm -hmm. You know, we even get that in the restaurant. And I've been in the, I had been in the restaurant industry for many years. So, you know, I'd walk up to the tables like, hi, how are you? Good. Okay. That person's Great. not okay. interested yeah. in yeah. conversation. Yeah. Take your order, get you <laughs> yeah. out. You yeah. know, like, yeah, and then there's the other people who tell <laughs> yeah. you their whole story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, read the room. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And some people want to hear your story, too. Right. Like, I, I mean, I think our some people. Yeah. You know, but some people just want to get their coffee and go. Yeah. And this is like the perfect system for them because they do not have to interact with people. Right. So. Yeah. And sometimes we find that. we have kinks to work out, like problems, and we'll have to go outside. It breaks the magic for people. Right. Yeah. yeah. So actually, yeah. like some people really want. They're like, oh no, scary. somebody's actually in there. It's uh, like yeah. it's like the, the like, Wizard oh. of Oz coming out from yeah. behind the curtain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Do not look at the man yeah. behind yeah. the curtain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we literally had a curtain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the door. That's right funny. Now. Yeah. But yeah. once we get to the twenty four seven. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, you we'll will get there, get there right? Yeah. But I mean, we wanted to make sure that that customer experience was right. right. But before you automate all the stuff behind the scenes, to me, that's just it's just work it's just mm -hmm. engineering but figuring out that you know personal experience and how that all works right. i think is and plus you know working with all their phones and all that that that's the hard part and so yeah. i feel like we really tackled the toughest part of the problem to begin with and then the rest of it is just yeah but don't worry we have listened to our customers and so we have a lot more to build mm. right oh yeah next yeah. quad yeah. and an android app 
and the, the Android same. app, yes, which yes, yes, I know. I know. Like people yeah. are so angry. I'm an Android. Like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sean's, oh, sorry. Sean's got the iPhone, so he's oh, all yeah. good. But oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we did sell fun, so we, yeah. <laughs> we there like, you go. Well, we had to make some choices. Yeah, but, uh, so you had to budget yeah. properly, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there soon. So if you had one piece of advice to give somebody who has an idea or wants to start something, what mm. would it be? Mm. I mean, I, I think I would go back to the just build the smallest version, the most basic version of your idea and just try it out. Like you learn so much so quickly by doing that. And, um, and it also, like I, I feel like this whole process has – it's a real test of your conviction, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, are you willing to push a significant amount of your chips into the middle of the table and you know, sort of burn the boats a little bit or, or not? And, and if yeah. you're not willing to do that, then it's probably not the right thing for you, honestly. Right. Like if, if you're not that committed to it and it's just a fun side gig, then, eh, you know, stick with your day job. You right. Know? I, I guess that's what I would say. Yeah, I'd also um, add that um, it's a very relationship-based. I mean, like most mm. things in life. Right. Um, like spend a lot of time cultivating relationships and learning yes. and things like that. Because Finding the right people to work with. How do you do that when you're an introvert? Well, <laughs> I'm actually now a trained extrovert introvert. Yeah. <laughs> I think I they, call, they call that like a, an am, ambivert or something. Like, really? Oh, wait, I have to go. Name? Oh, okay. I, there's a name for it. I'll have to, sure. I'll, I'll yeah. share that after. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the older I get, the yeah. less I care about what people think of me. Yes. Uh, that helps 100%. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, um, you know, Rob as a partner is so extroverted. Yeah, and I've never really cared what people think. Yeah, that's so great. Nice. That's easy, a good way you know? to live, yeah. though. That's yeah. perfect. I, it's, there's bad aspects to that, yeah. too. I, I have to remember. Says what he wants. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of do that, too, though. Yeah. 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 But I think, like, having seen him interact with other people as an extrovert, I'm like, oh, like... And I also read this book, and I highly recommend it for introverts. It's called Quiet. It completely changed mm. the way I think about introversion. Quiet. Yeah. yeah. Because I think that my whole life, I blame myself for being an introvert because the American culture definitely rewards extroverts. Right. Um, and so you're kind of like, oh, what's wrong with me? How do I change myself? How do I become more extroverted as a result to, like, you know, kind of, you know, like to get yes. ahead in your, like, 9 to 5 job, you're going to have to be putting yourself out there a lot. And I just wasn't good at it, still not very good at it. But when I read that book, it was really about accepting introversion as something actually super awesome, too, for different right. reasons. Like, yep. introverts are, you know, very creative and, like, yep. spend a lot of time thinking about things. So there's good stuff to that and accepting that about yourself. But I would say that now, being with Rob, I've become more extroverted as a result. Right. Because he just go, goes around talking to everyone. Yep. Mm. Yeah. I feel like that's something that I went through, too, because I – it was actually my son who had said to me um, – you know, mom, you're really an introvert. You're not actually an extrovert because I'm very outgoing and I love to talk and I write and I could do things like this. And I was like, yeah. well, what do you mean? And he said, you need to be alone. Like, mm -hmm. if you're not alone to recharge and if you don't have your alone time, like, you fall apart. Like, you could be in a, you know, so it's like I could go out and be at a party or in an event or I could be doing networking and all of this and that and I'm totally in it. But once I leave, like, I can't do that anymore. I'm wiped. I need to be alone. I could spend mm -hmm. days and you know, alone by myself. Like, I could sit outside in the grass and not talk to anybody for hours, like, yeah. and just leave me alone. And um, yeah. I never really looked at it either way, but it makes total sense because I do not get energized by being around people all of the time. Like, even after this podcast, I'll go home and be like, oh, <laughs> I just want to crash. Yeah. I can't crash because I have kids. So, yeah. like, you know. <laughs> yeah, totally. But yeah. That's, how, that's how I'll want to I'll want to be, but, you know, but then my husband says, well, you know, you make friends in line at the grocery store, like, and mm, yeah. after 10 seconds, I know somebody's whole life story, like everywhere I go, yep. you know, it's <laughs> introverts are good listeners. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what it is, right? Yeah. Introverts are good listeners. And my son's seen your photos. A woman was, you know, walking by and there was a hawk standing there on like on a, um, a railing and he was really close to us and so she walked by and she saw it and while my son's walking around getting his senior photos done I had learned everything about her like who her sons were how one of them lived in New York one of them was in California how she was retired one of them was moving home and this and my son was cracking up laughing he's like I can't even with you <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah but that's it and you just ask a lot of questions and then you yeah. just listen to people that's one of the things that I think maybe that what you would get from that is you just yeah if you just listen and you hear people and then you kind of respond to that and 
that's all you really need. Yeah. Right? It's a superpower for us. Because yes. like if we're good at listening to our customers, yes. then we, we can make changes based off their feedback. Right. And read between the lines. Like I think as introverts we're probably pretty good at that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. What's funny though is like I used to be just like you. Like I'd need time to recharge and be by myself because introverts like really like their own company yeah we're good company. Love it. yeah yep. um but now i'm just like if i don't go out and i don't kind of like talk to a lot of people i'm not as recharged i like that now like yeah I like going out talking to a lot of people it's been mm. weird how that changed no. you it's it's just like learning anything well you know they say that you know scientists are learning that you can rebuild neural pathways in your brain to like change anything it's not static so yeah you're not who you are when you were five. Yeah. Right? That, there's beauty in that. There's there wonderful. Is. Like, people can continuously change. Yep, and grow yeah. and learn, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, like, probably what makes us, like, small business owners is, like, we like change. We embrace it. Right. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to, like, pivot and, like. Totally push yourself it. outside the comfort zone. Um, I mean, yeah. while I like my comforts at home, you know, I want my hot coffee and I want my wood-burning stove going and things like that. But, like, I like to try different things, do different things, and push myself outside of that, mm-hmm. you know, place. Like, even coming into the po- – every time I come into the podcast room, I get the jitters. And I'm like, okay, I'm nervous. Nobody can tell, but, like, I know. So mm. I just, you know, it, it, it's just part of the process, and yeah. that's normal. And you just push through it, and you – and then you're fine. Yeah. You know. I could not tell. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're natural. Yes. Yeah. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> nice. nice. All right, guys. So what is it that you want everybody to know about Ping? Where can they find you? What are your hours? Where are you located? How do they download the app? Give us all that information real quick before we close out. Yeah. So um, you can download the app on the App Store uh, for iOS. It's uh, P exclamation point NG. And uh, the hours are right on the homepage. But right now it's uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, 7 to 2. And then Friday through Sunday, 9 to 3. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just uh, your first drink is free when you download the app. Oh, nice. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you can uh, order anytime in the great words of Shakira, whenever, wherever. You, you, <laughs> can, uh, y- you can order first thing in the morning, and we won't make your drink until you get close. Okay. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, don't worry about that. You, you'll, you'll still have a fresh drink, and then you just drive right up to the pod and uh, go to the lit window, and we'll present your drink. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. The beauty of our technology is that we know who's in front of the window. So we've had like four customers come through with four different orders all in the same car. And we can tell that and we can present it to them. So Because yeah. you're pinging their phone. That's right, not the car. The car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we do not store that information. We don't track people. We only mm. know when they arrive within the geofence and yeah. when they leave. And so you can't, you're not going to sell it to third parties or use it? Absolutely. No, right. definitely not. Yeah. Various causes no. or anything like uh, that. We, we <laughs> value our privacy and yeah. I agree. Yeah, no, because I think that's a huge concern for everybody, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A customer have said that. But, yeah. Uh, but we're also fundraising right now. So nice. uh, if anybody has uh, bags of money that they don't want to have anymore, just yeah, totally. reach out directly to us. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scrooge and McDuck. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> if you're swimming uh, and, and you just want to decrease. The Gold coins. We'll yeah, take it all. <laughs> <laughs> um, and lastly, our uh, website is P I N G T H R U. Ping through. Ping through. Yeah. Right. So it's ping with an exclamation point, but on the website, it's ping with an I. Because you can't do yeah, an exclamation point on a website. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, and we have to be different than, there's a golf brand called ping. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. But, uh, but they did it for the noise of the uh, right. golf ball. Right. Hitting the golf ball. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Ours that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You ping through. No conflict of interest there. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> Where is the pod Pretty located different. right now? Oh, it's in Lowell, Mass, uh, off of Drum Hill Road. Okay. It's a uh, 10 Technology Drive yeah. in Lowell. It's right on the uh, the border between Chelmsford and Lowell in that uh, shopping. But if you just area. put ping into your uh, Google Maps, it'll, it'll take you right there. Right there. It'll, it'll awesome. take you exactly to the... Uh, to With the, the exclamation point. With the exclamation point. P exclamation yeah, point. That's right. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very exciting. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. I think this was a really great conversation. Yeah, this yeah, was super fun. Us. Yeah, thank great. you. Yeah, I'm so excited much. for you guys. I can't wait to see where Ping goes. Well, thank you. Yeah, and thank you for having such good barbecue that it brought us together. Oh my yes. Gosh, <laughs> I, I want to have another beef rib. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Saturday. actually thinking about it sometimes. Hungry thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yes. You like ate that whole thing too. You were oh, sitting yeah. there like, okay, I can't I felt like an animal. Yeah. It was so good with all the different sauces. Oh, yeah. But note to your audience, please go early because yes. yeah, because yeah, things sell out. It's so good. But it's also a yes. to go back. Yep, so. that's what I say every time somebody will say, "Do you have this?" And I'm like, "No, but next time you come, we'll have it." Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Good. 
All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Okay, Erica, we're going to wrap this up. Okay. Thank you for listening. This was Through Fire and Oak. We're going to see you guys in the next episode.